everyone. Today we are going to make pizza dough. This is a very simple and basic pizza dough, pizza dough recipe, but I'm excited for you to try it because the purpose of this lesson is really to give you an opportunity to create your own pizza. So with your own toppings and whatever you really enjoy and love. So this is just a starting off point or a base for that, create your own creativity to shine. So our pizza dough is gonna start with lukewarm water. So lukewarm water just means that it's warm to touch, but at no point would you need to take your hand out because it was too hot. So I've got 125 milliliters or half a cup. Keep in mind that I measured on a flat surface. It's going into my bowl. Then I'm putting in a teaspoon or five milliliters of sugar. And we put sugar into our water whenever we're working with yeast because it is food for our yeast. So I'm just gonna mix that up. So we're looking for most of our sugar to dissolve so that when we sprinkle our yeast on, it's all throughout the water. Now I'm using instant yeast or quick rise yeast. It can come in little packets like this or jars. If you're never planning to make this again, I recommend getting the little packets. They're cheaper and they keep the yeast fresh for longer. If you are thinking you're going to get into different types of yeast doughs, you can get yeast, but always make sure you keep it in the fridge. Otherwise it starts to bloom in the warmth of our environment. So I'm gonna sprinkle this on top. And this just gives the yeast a chance to, as I said earlier, to bloom. So we're gonna to start to activate the leveling agent in the yeast, which produces carbon dioxide. And you'll start to notice if you may love the smell, but it starts to give off a smell as it releases those gases. People who grew up with families who made bread at home tend to love the smell, but if you've never smelled it before, it can smell a little bit off. So don't be, um, taken aback by that. Because we're using instant yeast, we don't need to let it sit for very long, a minute to two minutes. Um, some recipes you may find online won't let it sit at all. They'll just mix it all together. And that is the beauty of instant yeast. It works well in all sorts of recipes. But once you get, um, you'll, once you let it sit for a minute, you'll start to notice it foams a little bit around the edges. Um, and once you see that foam, you can get going on the recipe. So once you've got the, the yeast has started to foam, we're going to also add in our oil. So we're adding in 15 milliliters of oil. The only reason we don't measure on top is that we don't wanna accidentally add too much and then be in a bit of a guessing game as to how we need to fix that. So there's my 15 milliliters of oil or my tablespoon of oil. And I can use my whisk still to beat that all up. Now, at this point, the whisk needs to go away. If you try to use the whisk once you have added the flour in, you will just be dealing with one big goopy mess and you will lose a significant portion of your dough. So the whisk goes away. We're gonna switch over to a wooden spoon. This flour that I'm added already has salt incorporated into it because you're gonna wanna make sure you have salt in your dough, otherwise your dough will come out bland because remember salt is a flavor enhancer. And I'm gonna mix in, this is 250 to 300 milliliters. So a cup to a cup and a quarter of flour. And I'm going to use my wooden spoon to mix. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the dough to stick to the spoon, not the bowl. That's how I know it's ready to come out of the bowl to be kneaded. Depending on where you live, and depending on what your environment looks like, this may this type of recipe, all yeast doughs will require more or less flour because um, the amount of humidity in the air will change what you need. So you'll see that as I'm spinning this, as I'm mixing this, the dough has started to stick to my spoon rather than the bowl, and our bowl should end up being quite clean, which is great. But before I turn it onto the counter, I'm gonna first of all get rid of that oil. I'm also going to get myself some additional flour. I'm gonna lightly sprinkle the counter because we're going to be kneading. Now, you can use a KitchenAid mixer, a handheld mixer to do this. If you have a bread maker, it would do all of this agitating or this kneading for you. But I would encourage you to try it at least one time by hand because what I'm hoping you'll see is that as you need, um, the more you need, the more gluten or the more elastic you're going to create. I'm just going to get some extra flour out here. 
So when we are creating this gluten, we want to create those tight, um, elastic protein strands. It will become smooth. Right now you can see it's kind of lumpy. It kind of comes apart really easily. So as we need, that won't be the case. Now this is pretty sticky. I'm just going to add a bit more. When we're kneading, we're using the heel of our hand and the three motions we're looking for are pushing, folding, and then turning. And we're just going to do that over and over again. It, this type of recipe, you're going to want to knead for about 10 minutes at least. As you're kneading, um, you'll notice you'll probably need to add more flour as you go. Just start to be aware that it shouldn't be sticking to your hands, nor should it be sticking to the counter, but you don't want a big floury mess. By the end of this, the cleanup should be pretty quick. I shouldn't have mass amounts of flour all over my counter. Most of it should get incorporated into the dough and your dough may reach a point where you don't need to add any more flour. You can just knead it directly on the counter without having to add more. And again, it's not sticking to your hands and it's not sticking to the counter. So once you've kneaded for 10 to 15 minutes, you'll notice the dough is significantly smoother and it creates this kind of elastic um, feel to it or um, texture to it. While you're, you need to let the dough rise, so if you shape it into a ball like so, and we're gonna just lightly oil our hands about the size of a dime, between a dime and a nickel on our hands, around like that, and then just pat the outside. And this is just to stop the dough from drying out as it's rising. You're gonna to wanna to put it somewhere where it's warm, ideally next to a stove or on top of like the warming spot on your stove top. And then you always want to cover it with a, a clean tea towel. And we're gonna let that rise for at least half an hour to 